it's Guido coming at you with a Tactics Talk. I appreciate you tuning in. I do appreciate the support of my channel. I've got a four-pack of T67 gameplay from J-Man1905. You can see I've got him loaded in here, and he is from Clan Ninja. As I said in the T67, the Tier 5 American TD. Zippy little tank with a fantastic gun. Relatively low-level gameplay, so new players should get something out of this. J-Man has asked me for some help on his gameplay. Along with the replays, he sent questions specifically for each replay, but I think they apply to all of these. So I'll just go over those real quick. And they're excellent questions because they're questions you should ask yourself as you're attempting to get better when you look at replays or think about how you played. So the first one was, what should I have done differently, if anything? Always a fantastic question. Whether you won, lost, did damage, did poorly, what should I have, I have done differently, if anything? How do you play when your team crumbles like this? And we'll get to that specific example, but that's a good question. How do you play when your team crumbles? What should you do? Corollary, was it kind of your fault? Number three, when, if at all, should I have come down from my mountain to secure the win? This one grinded my gears pretty good. Not insulting J-Man, we will get to that. I think it's number three, and we'll talk about that at length. But the question was, when should I have come down from my mountain slash when should I have pushed out from where I was in order to try to secure the win? It's a great question. Lastly, what could I have done differently to have obtained a better result? That goes back to the first question. What could I have done differently? And that's what all these debriefs are about. So let's get started with his first game. As I said, he's on airfield here and he is in his T-67. They have spawned on the east side. And off he goes. He's got a pretty good spawn. And initially I saw this happening when I reviewed it the first time. And I said, great, I think he's going for the perch, right? I think J-Man is trying to get up on this perch, which is right here. The Reds have a similar one over here. It provides a lot of overwatch of the middle. Potentially guys, scouts trying to get in here, maybe even poking down on this corner and shooting guys that are unaware and not paying attention. So I'm thinking, good, J-Man's on it. He's got about 5,000 battles, running about, I think, a 50% win rate, so pretty good player for his experience level. He's kind of... Wait a minute. What are we doing? Okay, I think maybe we're just exploring. We just wanted to see if it could happen, and he's going to go up the ramp. No, not going up the ramp. The other scout goes by. And he's not really doing this, is he? He's going to try again. Going to try again. All right, here we go. All right, bear with me on this replay. I'm going to be silent for a moment. And it's going to be for a while, but just bear with me. All right, that's all I can take. That's all I can take being silent. You see two heavies have even passed him, and now we're attempting it again. We are on a minute and a half into this game, and J-Man has neither taken a position nor taken a shot nor done anything useful for his team, and he's attempting to get up this hill. Let's talk about this for just a minute because it's going to play into quite a few of his replays here. Uh, J-Man seems to like climbing, and, and in and of itself, that's not a bad thing, but the question becomes... When are you trying to do it? Where are you trying to go? And what is the purpose of it? So this particular climb, I'm assuming he's trying to get up on that little promontory right there, but you can actually get up on that promontory by going up the ramp where the stirv is and taking a hard left and going right up onto the promontory. And as I mentioned earlier, when he spawned in, he had a great spawn to go right there. And more than likely, because of the speed of this tank, he'd have got there well before anyone could have even had a shot on him, even as they have fairly fast tanks themselves. So now we are in a minute and a half, and we're going to approach into two minutes. And we have not done anything. So initial positioning, J-Man, absolutely is important in this game. I'm going to pause it again because I'm going to digress into another discussion about what this game is. And this game at its core is a hit point reduction game. The team that starts to reduce, reduce hit points faster and better while preserving their own hit points is usually going to win. So the goal of this game is to reduce hit points until a winning condition is found, which is either you have reduced the enemy team to zero or you have found a situation or a capability to cap without losing. 
There are ways to steal some games where you have less hit points by capping, but that is not the primary, nor is it the usual way that is the game is won. So it's a hit point reduction game. What does that mean? Time is hit points, or time is money as they say, but we'll call it hit points. You've wasted two minutes and more at this point, and you have not done anything to reduce the hit points of the enemy team. And that is where initial positioning is incredibly important. So where can you initially position with the T-67? We already talked about the promontory. This spot down here for shooting across the guys on the top or coming around this corner, kind of up in this area here, is decent. The T-67 is fast, has pretty good gun depression. You could actually work the middle a little bit. I think we all realize, though, that the T-67 is a glass cannon, so you do need to be careful about that. I am not advocating that you rush out into the middle of everything and start blapping people getting spotted. That's not the point at all. The point is get some place where you can get shots. Oh, you found one. Outstanding. This is actually a pretty good spot. And had you been there a little earlier, you may have had even more shots than you have right now. J-Man has a pretty good idea of bushes and the spotting mechanics. So it sort of makes me feel like maybe he's a re-roll or at least he's somebody who's paid attention to the game and learned a bit about it. Either one is fine. I'm not scoffing that at all. But he does have a good idea of some of the bush mechanics. Hanging it out a little bit there. You did get seen, but those guys are kind of busy, so they more or less ignore you. This is something you will find at lower tier games. Sometimes people are fairly unaware. One other thing, now let's talk a little bit about actual tactical stuff. Your zoom mechanics are strange to me. I'm assuming you are using shift because what happens is you go straight into full zoom and if you're not pointing exactly at the guy you want to see, sometimes you miss them. So pay attention to that and I'll try to point it out on occasion. It'll become beating a dead horse at some point. But what happens with that type of technique instead of using the scroll wheel is that you will zoom in and miss the guy i.e. not be pointing at it and all of a sudden you'll be searching around because you're so zoomed in looking through such a small soda straw you're unable to see the periphery of the view and kind of see where he actually is so quite often you lose the guy you are trying to zoom in on and that is what it looks like unless you're very quick with the scroll wheel but even if it is using the scroll wheel be careful about zooming in so close that you lose the guy you're not quite pointing in the right direction I think you kind of failed to have a Take a couple shots, you might have been able to get there. Driving up on that, you're just trying to get away from this guy. And now we're repositioning. Remember when I talked about at the very beginning, it's a hit point reduction game? And that without you out there starting to get shots early, you probably gave up some of the hit point reduction that you could have generated in that two and a half minutes before you really started f fighting. Your team might be a little bit be better off if you were able to do that. Now you're moving around looking for the uh, ISU-122. And we'll come up top. Now you're going to spend a lot of time kind of poking up and down right here. The guy sees you. He's not able to actually turn and shoot until about right now. So if you had just stayed up on top with your gun trained on him and continually shot him, that would have been better off. Moving around a little bit does throw off artillery, so if you were attempting to throw off the artillery, that was fine. Also realize that as you were coming up here, it's hard to see, but that edge of that ground right there was actually raising up. Had you been slightly to the right, your gun wouldn't have been popping up like it was, and you wouldn't have actually had to come up and over as much. You would expose less of your turret as you came up and over. I probably would have popped up there, shot him three times, and then ran off without the rocking back and forth, and just accepted that maybe the arty gets lucky in there but right now it's a bit of a time for heroics you got to make things happen so you're going to have to do as much standoff as possible you want to maintain as much room between you and the enemy as you can that was pretty good you found him right away and killed him good on you and at this point i would be looking for their arty the panzer fizzle izzle four thing was way down here so this is a time where you need to assess the map and what's going on you know where the 122 is this guy, the Panzer Fizzlewizzle, was last seen down here. You're here. That means Artie is probably up here and vulnerable to you. And your JPZ is kind of between you and the Panzer Fizzlewizzle. So right now, I would go own their Artie. Take them out of the equation. 
little head here. I'm going to speed it up just a little bit. Good old dog barking in the background. There you go. You found one of them. Oh, don't move. Just kill him. There you go. And again, you do have to pay attention with Artie there. Obviously, if he looks like he's trying to load in or uh, sight in on you and take you out, you do. Moving around a little bit can help out. That's obviously very true. But the technique of rocking back and forth too much can actually be bad as well. This thing reloads so fast, sometimes you can machine gun things down before they can even think about getting sighted in on you. There's the Panzer Fizzle. Okay, so this is camera work, camera technique, camera work technique, whatever you want to call it. I talk about this a lot on my all my videos where you see a guy on the mini-map and you're driving around. Why not just zoom out and turn around and see what he's doing? Because what I just gathered from that is he's at 79%. That's something I didn't necessarily know. All right, so there he is. You might be able to tell which way he's sort of moving. Sometimes you can tell on the mini-map, but you can definitely tell by looking at what his little icon is doing there. Just take a look and then get back to what you're doing. Because right now I'm not even certain you know where he is. Now you're looking for the 122. Take him out. Oh, stop moving. Just kill him. Let it zoom. There you go. Okay, yeah, two things right there. Obviously, I had a dove right off of that to avoid getting hit by the Crusader SP or backed right up against that wall, whichever one you wanted to pick, but the quick back up and forward. And the backup is kind of an artifact that nearly everybody has. As soon as you shoot, guys go backwards, and I do it myself. I'll take a shot and start backing up, even if that's not really the move that I want. It's kind of ingrained in most players. This is another one with the camera work that bugs me. You need to be looking this way. Drive, drive that way and look this way because if that dude appears and your turret needs to be turned towards him, you may want to try to get a snapshot off or at least have an idea of where he is if he shows up on your mini-map and whether or not he can hit you. But you're sort of fixated on going forward here. So you know he repositioned. He came over this way. There he is. If you'd have done this, you'd have known where he was. But as it is, you're just running. Which is fine if you're just going to run. There you go. That's how you want to do it. Keep on trucking. Oh, look out, red line. Man, if the SP was paying attention, he might have laid one right on you right there. And unfortunately, they just took out your 304, so now it's just you. Looks like you had started typing, which is why you ran into the red line. I would have got myself much safer before I worried about typing so spotted at that point. Might be worth just laying a shot in there, I don't know. Pretty good view range on this thing, especially with the binocs. I like what you're thinking right there. You're going to do this quite a bit. We're going to speed this thing up because it takes a while for this to get going. There's two of them. The Panzer Fizzle Izzle did move up, but I wonder what he did. Yeah, go look. Kind of sticking around the, the cap, and that's fine, but this thing's so fast I wouldn't worry about it. If they dumped two on it and you were all the way on the other side of the map, you might have trouble getting back, but probably could still get there with the type. Not the type, but with the T-67. So I think this is all a good idea, moving around this way, try to find these guys. Where are they? I believe you actually find them here, but then you run off. I might have tried to put a couple shots into that guy. He does reload pretty quick, and he is fairly accurate, so this may not be a bad decision just to run off. Then they're already aimed in real fast on you, so there you go. Probably would have been the end of the game for me, because I would have probably tried to stay there and take him on. Very cautious, moving around. Very speedy. Up and around. We're just going to go chipmunk speed. You take a look here. I thought that was a good idea. Use the bushes that you know are there. Keep taking looks, but now you're getting down towards the end of the game, and it's time to get much more aggressive. And this is something that I've seen in a couple of your other videos, where towards the end of the game you're you're a little bit more willing to kind of take a draw rather than try to get a win. And for me, I think you try to get a win. Now this right here, let's go ahead and slow this thing down. Shows another weakness in some of your mechanics, your lead fire. I don't know if you, you're not understanding the concept, you're just not given enough lead fire, but if you point right at a guy that's moving fairly quickly from right to left or left to right, you're probably going to hit behind him. So you really need to get a little more lead fire in most of your shots. Unfortunately, you end up finding this Panzer 4C guy. And this is crazy because he disappears right here in what is essentially a tiny bush. I, 
for the life of me, cannot figure out how you're not seeing him right here unless he's... Maybe you didn't come around the side of the rock enough, but I cannot figure this one out. And then you just start shooting into that spot. He's actually there, which blew my mind. I guess... I don't... And the already hits you. <laughs> so I, I'm not really sure what happened there. There might have been something I, I was missing from the replay. Uh, but there's a couple things. So I think the big one is initial positioning is a big deal in this game. And had you gone somewhere useful instead of droned around trying to climb for two minutes, you might have found that you had reduced enough hit points of the enemy that this became a little bit closer or you guys actually win. Towards the end, I thought your idea of, of being careful and looking for these guys wasn't too bad. But through a combination of kind of bad shooting mechanics and maybe a little bit of timidity, you end up uh, getting nuked by that guy right there. One other thing that you could think about with the T-67, it's not great at it, but if you're kind of moving and shaking as you go at these guys, you might be able to spoil shots. But I think that Panzer Fizzle has a good enough left to right regard with its gun and, and reloads fast enough, he probably would have gunned you down anyway. It's got a nice, fast rate of fire and good velocity on its gun. So a bit of a disadvantage right there, but it would have been really nice had you killed that arty Obviously, you'd have won, right? So the, the lead fire on that very end couple of shots was a big deal. All right, so there's a couple things to think about right there. Basic, basically the game's a hit point reduction game, man. So let's move on to the next one. Here we are on our second example. We got J-Man. He's bottom tier in a 357. He's loaded into El Halouf. And he has asked for a little help with his gameplay. So let's see what J-Man does initially. Let's speed this up through the countdown. And off we go. So we discussed in the game before that initial positioning is important. And let's see where he chooses to initially position on this game. See if he can start reducing the enemy hit point pool faster. This, oh boy, here we go. Okay, excellent. He knows how to get up there, so he's up on this promontory. It's not a terrible spot. Got some lights, but he also got lit, and now we're back off. So the hard-fought-for spot, which is exposed, and there are two artillery on the enemy team. One of the disadvantages of a lot of the climbing spots, especially the ones that are on open terrain like that, is exactly that. You get spotted. In fact, their best scout is up on top there, or one of their best scouts. The T-71 is up on the hill. So now we're going to head at it again and we're going to run into the T-71. So that's a minute and we haven't taken a shot. There were actually some people we could have shot at down there. So initial positioning on this without actually trying to climb things is obviously along these ridges right here. Those guys got spotted, potentially shots into there. T-67 is nice and fast, fantastic tank for getting up onto this ramp right here and waiting for them to cross right here and shoot them in the side or for them to pop over on their ramp if you want to come a little bit further forward be there first and shoot them and back up immediately so those are two good spots more good spots are over here taking shots down on guys that are camping here potentially where a lot of these guys are shooting at guys trying to come up the ramp look at this all those TDs that's fully one third in fact with these these two and these guys which Artie is going to camp. That's over half their team, all still at cap. One scout here and a couple heavies heading over this way. I think if you think about that for a minute on an, in an initial positioning discussion or idea, you can tell right away that his team is going to struggle mightily to win this game. They just don't have enough guns in the right spots. And now that becomes the corollary of my discussion in the first game that this is a hit point reduction game and time is hit points. And the corollary is that in order to start winning you need to have more guns you're just taking sh shots at him right there more guns in the right position than they have. Right? So more guns in the right position than they have. And that, ha that is how the majority of the raffle stumps start is you have more guns in one spot and are able to gun down faster than the enemy team is their hit points. Now he's getting shots of opportunity here so he's doing something now which is good. Shoot there. A little bit of trouble with the gunnery skills on a couple of those shots. 
but even with the pretty good muzzle velocity on this gun, you can tell that that is a really long range shot and there's quite a bit of drop going on. But he does a nice job there hitting this guy several times. Oh, but he got spotted. And now he's going to get out. Another one of the limitations of the T67 is it's relatively limited in ammo, especially considering how fast it can shoot. And boom, there we go. So, spotted up there on the hill, sat for another shot, and then didn't run away. And with the way artillery is in this game, plus the fact that there were two on the enemy team and he's a very light tank, that was not a good idea. So getting off of that promontory immediately as he got spotted would have been his best bet right there. The other thing to think about J-Man in a situation like that when you get spotted is try to consider as best you can the number of tanks you still have in relation to their arty. So there were very few of you. They probably weren't trying to shoot your two arty. So there were only one, what, one, two, three, four, five of you left for them to even shoot at. Looks like those guys were pretty well hiding behind rocks. So Artie's going to shoot what they can see and what they can hit. And once you got spotted, man, they were definitely coming over and looking for you. Absolutely. Plus, you'd been spotted once before up on that promontory, so they probably knew you were there. Just waited way too long to try to get out of there. All right, man. So initial positioning, once again, obviously an issue. And then at the end game right there, just staying there a little too long and letting Artie hit you right there. I don't know if your initial positioning being better would have helped your team. You had so many guys camping in the back, but it probably would have helped you get more damage. All right, let's move on to the third one. For the third recording here, third play, we've got J-Man on Lakeville, again in his T-67, again bottom tier in a 3.57, but this is a pretty fantastic TD map. So let's take a look at this. Now, we've already got a couple themes going on here, climbing, and initial, initial positioning, spending a little bit too much time goofing around with climbing, which is limiting your initial positioning, has been kind of an issue for J-Man. So let's see what he does right here. And it's all in relation to the fact that the game is a hit point reduction game. And the sooner you can start reducing the enemy hit points, the better, which requires you to get into a position to fire your gun. Oh boy, Hellcat into the water. Outstanding. So I don't know what's going on there. And see, you were sort of, you were looking at the Hellcat wondering what on earth is he doing. Then you were typing and now we've got guys moving up in the middle. So watch out for that. That's a distraction. I'm not saying you would have had a shot on the WZ, but you certainly weren't even looking in that direction. So there we go. Looks like, yeah, I'm pretty sure you're using the shift. Yeah, you're definitely using the shift for your sniper. Different people have different techniques, and a lot of better players than me make that work. I just don't like it for the reason that often when you zoom in, you will miss the guy you're trying to look at, especially when they're moving with a lot of lateral left and right movement. So just consider using the zoom, but you do what you got to do. Oh, yeah, see, that shot's way over on the side. Try to anticipate the way the guy's moving. Fairly heavily armored tank, actually, for a medium. Some guys in the middle, and you're kind of sitting in the bush right here. I don't think this is a terrible decision, necessarily, position-wise. Your team's down three tanks already, though. You've got a Churchill that's driving up beside you, and I think everybody will enjoy this. And there goes the Churchill. Good job, Tank 72. You are a superstar. You're now famous. People are just uh, suiciding for some reason. There was a little bit of SA right there, actually. Uh, it, it wasn't going to be game-changing, but you'll notice that Churchill took a shot. So somebody actually was close enough to see him. Probably the WZ-132. And I don't think it's going to change the battle knowing that, but it's just a little thing to sort of note. Lots of little stuff like that in the game. Things that happen that can indicate to you where people are or who can be seen. There you go. So we'll gather up some hit points right here. So your team is starting to lose right now. And one of your questions has been, hey, what could we have done? When your team folds, what can I do? Well, there's two, two schools of thought. One is just turtle up and try to get as much damage as you can. The other one is to try to get to the side that looks like it might win and help them out. So there is a possibility that maybe going over to the valley might help those three tanks. I don't know. The valley's tough to fight, especially for that tank. The other option would be try to get into town and see if you can't help that heavy in town in the Jackson, the 3001 cleanup town. 
So really, this is a decision point for you. Am I just going to sit back and take whatever hit points appear to me, or do I want to try to make something happen? I guess the last option would be try to make something happen in the middle, but that would be extremely dangerous. But there's a possibility. Maybe you can clear out that WZ and start to own the middle and now get shots on the M4 improved over there. What you're going to choose to do, though, is back up and turtle up into the corner. And that's certainly a valid option. Your team is losing wholesale. I think I would have turned around and dri driven straight back here instead of, I know what you're trying to do, but the front armor on that thing doesn't really matter much. And you're probably also trying to get a shot if you could, which is fine as well. Now, I don't know if repositioning here would have been my answer because there are some buildings here and right now you're sort of out in the open. You're not even near the buildings, but you are in a bush, which is fine. But once they top that little ridge right there on the road, if you fire, you're going to be seen. You're, you're just too close to them. So, and that's going to happen. That's where they're going to come. So probably over to here. So you have a longer standoff and maybe are also able to help the town. So maybe you pick up some hit points from there and maybe you pick up some hit points from here. Or you get back here, there's a little ridge right here, a ramp. Maybe you get back here and try to defend the cap from there. You can also work around this way. Maybe shoot this way if they come up and over and shoot towards the cap. So I think a couple options that are way better than just sitting right here in this bush. And you've done this a couple times, and you know people do what they got to do. But typing while fighting, I don't know. I I try to avoid that. I do it once in a while. But see, there's that shift thing. Oh my God, where'd that guy go? <laughs> so you you shifted, and I, I can see you go. Where the hell did he go? Because he had he was driving left to right, but as soon as you shifted in, he went the other way, and now he's going right to left, and you completely missed where he was. Oh, did it again. What? Ah, where is he? <laughs> but you actually hit him. So good on you. And you get the kill. You're clearly spotted here. Ow. Ow. You know, backing up is fine. I know you're going for the buildings, but I think I might have tried to just zing forward to things much faster and head off this way. Except your friends died, so never mind. You're probably doing the best thing you can. <laughs> just try to get in here and survive. Now your rear end is sticking out, and your none of your viewports are really being able to see that, so... Anyone coming down that road more than likely is going to see the rear end of your tank and you're not going to see them. Guy's shooting at you every which way. Oh boy. And you get waxed right there. Alright, so initial positioning. I don't think the initial positioning decision on this one was awful. That bush wasn't bad. Uh, I like to get a little bit more up on this road, maybe have a little bit better view range down this way. There was a point where in which you were zoomed out looking down here. And your draw distance was only about right here. So anyone that got spotted who was trying to fade off behind here to go to the town, you'd have never been able to draw them and shoot at them anyway. Which is why I like to get up a little bit closer right here, potentially. And I think you needed to skedaddle out of here earlier, maybe go help the town. was probably your best bet. Secondary, maybe, to the valley, but that's not a great idea. And the thir tertiary or third one would be try to be the hero and sweep up the guys on the center, which was going to be very difficult in your T-67. So really, I think clearing out maybe over to here on a team like this where guys are driving into the lake and the team's just folding up was probably your best decision. You may have got a few more shots out of it. Let's move to number four. For the fourth and last, we are in Redshire once again. Uh, I was going to say 357, but it's not. It's a 510 and bottom tier once again, but still T67, fantastic little TD. None of the things he's faced has that not been able to handle, especially with a little bit of gold. So we're on Redshire, we spawned into the north side. Themes are then, as you recall, initial positioning, a little bit of positioning after the initial positioning, I, what do I do once I get to my initial spot? And then just some mechanical things with aim and camera work. Initially, I'm thinking, oh, great, we're going to actually go get a little forward position, maybe grab a bush up here and do some things with the... Oh, boy. Well, I'll give J-Man one thing. He does know his climbs. I had no idea that was possible. There you go. Now I do. And he is avoiding knocking down trees, which is a good thing, and he has got up to this area here with his T-67 initial positioning dead horse get it out get the stick so right now he is relying on the enemy coming to him 
and he's not going to get any early shots on anybody. Early damage is the best damage. He's not going to help his team start reducing hit points until either they die or the enemy team comes right at him. And that's the problem, especially with a spot like this that's right in the corner, which is where some of the more OP kind of overwatch spots tend to be in these on these maps. They tend to be near the cap, way up high, where you can sometimes glove save a game if the enemy team is really stupid. So, good deal. They're actually out ahead, but that has nothing to do with J-Man's doing. The other thing about this spot that I'm noticing where he is looking around, you can tell that, let's see right here, see the rock that's right there in front of him? It's actually not as great as it looks. That Churchill 3 is able to approach, he doesn't have any really good shots. If the enemy gets, and I can't move it right now, but to the left, kind of where the, the left circle is on the screen, and fades back a little bit, he's going to have shots. But if they're on the right or right up against that, big promontory of that big rock, he's just not going to have any shots. And we're going to look around. So really at this point he's relying on the enemy team coming right at him. And unfortunately he's got quite a few heavies up there who are dealing with those tanks. Let's see if this Churchill comes after the KV-1S. He doesn't. Kind of zoomed in looking through a soda straw. This goes back to camera work, J-Man. I would be, while well, you don't have a shot, just Zoom out and look around, and then right back in to what you're doing. There you go. That kind of thing, but a lot more of it. Well, it looks like, J-Man, your guys have them stuffed over there, and there's just a VK. They're shooting at them. They're right outside of your draw range. This is actually interesting because he shoots and he hits the guy. At some point here, he actually hits him. There you go. That's it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> And we're continuing to shoot, but we're obviously hitting the ground. You can see the, the shell hit the ground. We're not doing anything with this. And that's about four, maybe five shots now. Six shots. We're almost three minutes into the game, and we haven't really shot at anybody. Oh, here we go. Here's a dumb guy. Yep, there we go. So this guy's not being very smart about his play. He's just sort of driving. It looks like he's yellowing to his death or something. I'm not sure what his plan is here, but... And this is an example of the, what this position can do for you, is if somebody's going to be extremely silly like this, then yeah, you can gather up some pretty good hit points right here. But this has very little to do with your gameplay and has everything to do with their poor gameplay. Um, think about that for a minute. It was great. You shot him up, you got a kill, but that didn't have much to do with you. It had a lot to do with him being very foolish. Now, you knew the climb, and you made it happen, noted that that's absolutely true. But now these guys are just kind of coming out here. And right now, I don't think they really know you're up there. Obviously, you haven't been spotted, but they'll be able to tell that here pretty soon. Your heavies have pushed through. And you're getting some shots. There's that lead thing, and there's that shift aim thing that I'm talking about, or shift sniper thing that's kind of boofing you just a little bit right there. Alright, this game is pretty well in hand, man. You guys are doing pretty good. They got an arty, they got these guys. Everyone's more or less lit. You kind of know where they all are. Your heavies have pushed through. This is quite a good force right here, but you have a weakness in the middle. This is a problem. The T-50, the 67, the Su-100, they kind of own the problem. You've got the two flanks. These dudes are going nowhere. They've camped the entire game. Right now, see, the question was, when should I come off the mountain? The time is now, my friend. Get off the mountain. Okay, you got some shots maybe here. There we go. Let's shoot at that. Whoa. Sometimes I have the palsy, too. Oh. Not enough lead fire. Where's that guy? Whoa. There we go. All right, get off the mountain. Go clean up that T-50. Help the KV-1. Go help that KV-1. Oh. And we're getting down to low... Low shells. There we go. All right, now get off. Get off there. Go find that Su-100 and take him down. Of course, that Su-100 can probably one-shot you. Come on, man. Get up. You're not getting off. I already watched it. I know he doesn't get off. So to speak. But you're still in good shape. Look at this. You well outnumber them. They just have a KV-1 and a Ram-2. 
and the Su-100. What do you suppose that Su-100 is doing there, Jamin? Think about that Su-100, where he is. What is he doing right now? He is probably absolutely pummeling your guys hiding in that corner because he's up on that ridge in some trees. And those dudes are getting lit by the ram in the KV-1 and he's having a field day. Well, the Stug's over there. Your heavies have pushed in. They're not doing poorly. Uh-oh. That is not good. The enemy just evened it up. 3601's not too happy. And I've already answered the question. You should have been well off that hill. Here's the other thing about the T-67. The mobility, the view range, and the binox and camo that you have. You need to get off that hill, go find some bushes, and start working around the edges of this battle and start finding guys for dudes to shoot. Either yourself or someone else. You're down to 16 shells. Also, I'd get rid of the 3 he That gun has... There's no reason to carry 3 he on that gun. It does absolutely nothing. The ram's just walking into these guys. The Su-100's probably having a field day still. He's enjoying himself over there. I don't know what you're shooting at. I'm assuming you're trying to shoot at the Stug. Interesting. I mean, that's two more shells down the drain. Would have been epic if you'd have hit it, but there was so much stuff between you and him to include hills and buildings and whatnot. Yeah, you've got high ground, but I don't think you were ever, ever had a chance of doing that. All right, there goes the ram two, and you're now down, oh my goodness, down to three guys. And your team's a little bit irritated. There goes the IKV. And now it's just you and the Hummel. Early positioning and reaction. Early positioning and reaction is your friend. Now think about this as well. Let me throw this out at you. Let's say you were out there fighting. Maybe you had another couple shots in there and were able to bring down another tank or two. And you got to here and it was 2v3 or 2v2 or something. Maybe you were wounded because you were out, out there fighting a little bit and someone actually got a shot on you. This is always, always a great fallback position, isn't it? Because it's got such great overwatch of your cap. And you know you can get up to it. So maybe you change your ideology here a little bit. Do a little bit more, get out, get some spots, get some early shots be a part of the team early and then when things go south and you assess that you need a turtle strat then you come back to a position like this as opposed to go directly to a position like this and just hope that the enemy lets you have things like this so they've got four they may or may not realize you're up there you're counting on them coming at you and you got one outstanding now what do you think the odds are that the other three are going to do the same thing at this point do you really think the other three are going to do the same thing as he just did? I think you might get one, but I don't think you're going to get all three. Now you could be using the Hummel as bait, that's possible. Let's speed this up because it does take a while. Kind of looking around, looking around. Six minutes left. Hummel's running away. Running away. This does not go well for the Hummel. Yep, dead, M44 Psalm. So somebody spotted him. Probably the Stug moved up into a bush. I'd imagine he's up on that ridge down here somewhere, up in one of these trees. So he saw him, the M44 killed him, and now you're down to 1v3. And you're saying, you're chatting, hey, we could have worked together so well, but it goes back to... What I was saying, do you really think that the enemy is going to just keep walking up onto the cap? Well, for the moment, it looks like one is going to. Let your binocs cook. Okay, he's probably in a bush, isn't he? You might need to get a little closer. See if you can find him. There he is. He wasn't even in a bush. I don't think he really needed to back up. He wasn't going to see you. I suppose it's possible, but I don't think so. 
That hit him. Fire again. There you go. Now you could have come off the hill right there and probably ensured that that guy died right away. He's not there. Otherwise the cap would still be going, oh, he's back on the cap. Let's shoot one right into that bush. Oh, no, he's not on the bush. It's the KV-1. Another one of them decided to try to get on. If he didn't realize where you are now, he knows. Well, all right. Down to two. Remember I said I don't think they're all going to do it? They're certainly not all going to do it now. So now we're at two minutes. And I'm going to save everyone the rest of this one because it goes on for quite a while. Another two minutes, another three minutes, actually. Uh, you make a comment in here at the end, and you'll say, if they want to win, they have to cap, and I'll see them. And I have a counter question for you. What about you? Do you want to win? Because I'm telling you right now that that's probably not going to end up winning, and you're just playing for a draw right then. Get out there and try to win it, man. I think you could have easily done it. I think you've got the skills. You could have come off that hill. I think you should have done it way, way earlier. But certainly now, you probably could have come down there and cleaned these guys up. All right, man, that's four things, four battles for you. Uh, I think that initial positioning is something you should work on. Reacting to the fight, maybe being a little bit more aggressive at times. You need to look for some more solid camera work as far as looking around a little bit more for SA, and then I think you need to potentially work on your sniper technique as far as using the shift key, or at least be careful with that because you tend to zoom in past the guy, especially if they're maneuvering all at all, and you also tend to not lead fire quite enough for guys, and that may just be a case of trying to get used to the 67 and that kind of thing. All right, man, I hope this stuff helped. Hope everybody liked what they saw. If you did, make sure you support the channel and subscribe, and otherwise, good job, J-Man. We will see you.